Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt Atchity, that's Alonzo Duraldi, and the lovely Christy oh, Lemire. Thanks. You're lovely too. You're lovely uh, today. Thank you. Thank we're you. all lovely. <laughs> oh, mutual yeah, appreciation yes. society. Uh, we're here to talk about Mascots, the latest film from Christopher Guest, uh, the latest mockumentary uh, with a lot of the same players we've seen and some new faces. Uh, Alonzo, will you describe it? Yeah, so it is basically your Christopher Guest setup where it's a big competition, but this time it's not uh, dogs. It is mascots, the people who wear the big foam rubber outfits at sporting events. And uh, they have gathered from around the world uh, to compete to uh, for the f golden fluffy, right? Is that what the yeah? Yes. Yeah, uh, and you know it's it's a Christopher Guest movie, so you'll see a lot of familiar faces, and they'll be saying a lot of awkwardly funny things. Take a look. Did they make you this size just to fit in the worm costume? No, they made me this size when I was born. Was oh, I, I see. I thought maybe they shrunk you down or something. No, it's not like that. Just tell me everything. This fascinates the hell out of me. <laughs> She's a pencil. Emotions. That came so close to me. Benny the banana slug failed his drug test. What? Have you been drinking today? Yes. No, yes. Laughing. We have a drug problem and we got a sex problem. Hey! Mascots, they don't die. They just hang in a closet. Yeah, because they're it's, it's an outfit. It is, it's an outfit. We've just run out of steam at the point, you guys. It's just, it's, it's the same thing yeah. with like decreasing returns. Yeah. And I, I mean, this one especially, more than the others even, feels like they had a bunch of really funny ideas that they wrote down, right? And a bunch of funny ideas for like names of television shows or um, weird things that a mascot could do in, in, a, in, a, in a dance routine. Right. And then they kind of really vaguely, loosely tried to create something cohesive to put them all together, and it just doesn't work. It's just, it's, it drags. I think part of the problem here, look, like we, we've seen such great movies out of these guys before, right? Out of this whole team, we've seen, you know, I, I mean, starting back to Spinal Tap, which I know is not a Christopher Guest movie, right. but, but. That ethos. That ethos. Yes. And I think. You know, if we were to start analyzing the comedy of it, the challenge with mascots is that you think that it's going to be okay. This will be like Best in Show, right? Or this will be like a Mighty Wind. But the difference is the characters in Best in Show, like those dog owners, take themselves deadly serious in a lot of cases. And same thing with with uh, a Mighty Wind. Like the folk singers in there, we may laugh at them, but they're serious about what they're doing. Right and they're not self-aware and and not self-aware yeah. and there's not a self-awareness in the in with uh, the first one um, I'm sorry Duffman. with with Duffman, Duffman, Duffman and there's not a self-awareness with Best yeah. in Show. Yeah. You can't help but think that somebody in a mascot suit has some level of self-awareness mm -hmm. and mascots are silly by themselves, so it's hard to skewer something that's already kind of silly. Yeah. Like, okay, I think that that's a big problem here. Mm -hmm. I totally disagree with you guys. I like Please this quite do a bit. Go. Okay, I think I think for, for one thing, I think I could see where mascots would be people that take themselves totally seriously or take the, their art totally seriously in the same way that the dog owners and the other people did. And, and if you're they right. Did that in this film? If you saw those characters I, taking it that seriously, I feel like you do. I think they do. I mean, I, the, the few of them are, are fuck ups, like the, the the Chris O'Dowd guy, the the fist, you know. But I think for the most part, they do have that sense of like this is my craft and this is what I'm communicating, and and that's to me the essence. of these movies is the people who take something that is frivolous with this deadening degree of seriousness and that's where the comedy comes from and I, I mean I have a different take on the guest movies for example I always thought Guffman was too mean oh, like I thought that Guffman I was love that one. I think that's I know that's everybody's one. favorite everybody loves <laughs> Guffman I think that Guffman is too vicious for the sins of the people who are in it it's like okay they're small town theater people with delusions of grandeur but Whatever, you know. This uh, one's mean too, though. These people are idiots from small town wherever, and the movie's mean to them. But I, I don't know. But this yeah. one, it, it, but at least I felt like that they were, they were taking themselves more seriously, and they were, they were trying to make a bigger deal out of what it is they do on a larger scale, which is what they're doing because they're competing at this thing. So it's not like they're just doing it in their small town. They are now taking it to the world stage. I don't know. I found it funnier. Tom Bennett, who I think is the comedy discovery of the year, I'm sure in England, y'all have known him for years, and we're just dumb and catching up. But he was great in Love and Friendship, and he's really funny in this, I thought, as the sort of, one. yeah, the third generation, okay. you know, football mascot. Um, 
There are some missteps, like Corky comes back for no reason. I was going to mention that. They don't yeah. do anything funny with that. Yeah, speaking of Guffman, yeah, he comes back and does the, Christopher Guest himself comes back and does the Corky St. Clair role. And yeah. like in one scene and why. Yeah, it's Just kind of pointless. Just to remind you, hey, if you like that movie, but, hey, yay. Let, let, but let's not forget, the last guest, the previous guest documentary was For Your Consideration, which was terrible was. and that was a movie that could have been brilliant I mean when you just uh, on paper the idea of those guys going after the Oscar process should have been just brilliantly devastating and inside and and really acid and it was not uh, you know it didn't have any kind of perspective that felt like it was made by somebody who really understood how that process worked, which those guys should, right. because, I mean, A Mighty Wind got a Best Song nomination, even, right. you know. And and again, like this movie, you know, um, for a consideration, had individual ideas that were funny. Like, Home for Purim is a really funny idea, and how, yeah. how the, the movie changes. And the it's, plastic surgery. Yeah, and, and there's just, in, again, individual ideas, but not like a cohesive kind of momentum that makes it have a drive and a forward sense of energy. It's just like, oh, there's this kind of amusing thing, here's another kind of amusing thing, and, and it should lead to something, because it's it's leading to a competition, you know? It's a, it's a sports movie kind of in itself. Yeah, it I, should be leading to like, ooh, who's gonna win? And by the point, it's like, oh, here's a funny idea. I, I, I felt like some of those characters do have an arc and they do go somewhere and they, you know, there, there's something interesting about what's happening with them. There are some, you know, I, I liked the, the 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 husband and wife couple and their sort of ongoing Zach stuff. Woods and I'm and, like, hang on. Um, you know, uh, I'll, look I'll look it up. Yeah, from 22 Jump Street. Um, you know, I, I, I granted there, there were some missed opportunities along the way, but for the most part, I laughed a lot and I liked it way more than for your consideration. And I think it's it's at least on par with, if not better than a mighty wind. It, but, it, but again, we talk about people who were his. Oh, Sarah Baker. Sarah, okay. Um, the people who are his his core troop. There, you, know, you have. Fred Willard, Parker Posey, Jennifer Coolidge, they're all in it, Bob Balaban, they're John all in Michael it so, so briefly. I mean, I guess some of right. the Jane Lynch stuff is funny. I mean, again, individual stuff, but there's it's such a huge troop now, and they've added so many new actors that not everyone gets the opportunity to make the impact that you hope they would. Well, yeah, but look at how many people are in Best in Show, and and, and they rotate in and out. We don't have Catherine O'Hara or Eugene Levy this time around. I don't know. I I had a good time. You had fun. Yeah. I, I, like, eh. Yeah, I wanted this to be better. I wanted this to be sharper, and I felt like, you know, taking on the mascot scene, it's kind of fish in a barrel. Mm -hmm. Like, it's too easy, right? Like, it's, it's already it's, a ridiculous thing. I mean, there's a look. There's an inherent and dog shows aren't right. take on figure <laughs> well, but skating. The <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the difference. Like, you can understand with a dog show that, especially when you get into the history and heritage of these breeds. You get that people take that very, very seriously. There's right? prestige and there's, and there's prestige money involved. And that's a big show. And, mm -hmm. and kind of similarly with folk singers and folk music mm -hmm. and that whole scene, like there's there's almost a kind of an acknowledgement of the public at large mm -hmm. that show that gives these people, I mean, you watch, like the Westminster Dog Show gets right. national television. Right. Right. Like there's an acknowledgement that somebody else outside of this core group takes this seriously, right? But when you're going to something like mascots where they're having trouble even getting people to come and show up for the competition, and the other thing is like, yeah, these guys dress up in phone costumes. Like that is inherently silly mm -hmm. in and of itself. I mean, I think that the comedy that the ESPN spots have done with mascots around the ESPN yeah. offices are funnier than anything that really goes on in this movie. I don't know, I, I, think, I think the case can be made that that anything that you take seriously is serious and important, uh, and, any, and then anything that anybody else takes seriously is ridiculous. And so I, I think that the people in this movie take this stuff seriously, and that's what makes them ripe for comedy. Okay, what's your number then? I said uh, seven and a half. I had a good time. Two point eight. It's not that good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, what did I give it? You a said five? five and a half. Five and a half. I yeah. Mm. File this away when you say that I hate everything and I'm the one always dragging the score down. These he, are the these yes. are the killjoys. Alonzo is high on Medea and mascots this yes. week. He's the one to trust of the three of us. <laughs> so our number is a 5.3. It's a 51% yeah. of the tomato meter. So there. You, you could watch it or you could watch Final Tap again and that'd be a much better, better choice. Better off with Final Tap. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs>